world-renowned designer, artist, tattoo artist. We know you just finished a global campaign for Vans Footwear. You've got a diesel cologne launching, launching worldwide right now. You continue to work with Lance Armstrong and the Livestrong Foundation, and very passionate about cars. Why don't you tell the audience a little bit about how you got to this point today? Well, I pretty much uh, started off uh, a long time ago with my old man, and he would take me to car shows, you know, and uh, Pop picked up that I like to draw. I mean, he was uh, really encouraging in that area, you know, he would, uh, my mother and father would always tell me I was the greatest artist in the world, you know, and I believed them. And as I got older, I looked back at those drawings and they were all stick people. So my old man lied to me, but it, it went in a very slow motion way. It went from me going to car shows and I started doing portraits of people's cars when I was a kid and then I met Easy e and Easy e was like, man, why don't you do these album covers for me? So next thing you know, I was in the music business. I didn't know what I was doing, but I was doing these album covers and from my favorite groups at the time, it was like Above the Law and MC Ren and this whole group you guys probably never heard of called N.W.A. But it's, it's a trip how all that stuff kind of snowballs from one thing into another. A uh, bunch of mistakes in between. A bunch of trying to figure out how, how a graffiti writer or a, or a muralist, automotive muralist, goes into doing professional art. Uh, I never went to art school, so I kind of learned in a more of a, an apprenticeship style of learning. Designing, you're building cars, taking cars to car show. Why don't you share with us, what's a day in the life like for you? Well, a day in the life of, of an artist is, is different from a lot of people, you know. Uh, lately, I've been taking my kids to school in the morning, which is a, is a big thing, you know. Artists, we're not supposed to come out till afternoon. So I'll do an hour of airbrushing on the canvas, an hour of working with the cars. They pull me away, I gotta go to my job and tattoo. So they gotta drag me out of this place, but I love it. Alright, welcome you guys. This is uh, basically a spot where normally if you come throughout the week, there'll be finished cars in here. Upstairs is my tattoo shop. So the tattoo shop kind of, uh, for the last couple of years, finances the, a lot of the car building. And This is my ice cream truck, which is a 1963 international milk truck originally. Uh, it started off as a joke. One of my partners actually owned it, and he just wanted to uh, drag bumper in the neighborhood and, and hit the switch on people and, and uh, give free ice cream away, you know. And once I, I, I told him I was going to knock the murals out in about two weeks, you know. <laughs> Ended up taking me about uh, two and a half years, but who's counting, you know. <laughs> once I started taking off on it, I kind of seen something a little bit bigger than clowning in the neighborhood with the car. I thought possibly maybe uh, in a museum one day or something like that to show our heritage and, and uh, our style in car customizing. And so far it's been in uh, two museums. It's been in the, it showcased for nine months in the entrance of the Peterson Automotive Museum and it was showcased in the Museum of Contemporary Art last year at the uh, Art in the Streets, which basically celebrated graffiti artists and uh, this was my piece that I entered. So everything done on this this truck is freehand. There's no uh, pencil sketching. There's no reference source. There's no pictures I look at when I'm drawing at it. Um, it's just all off the head. So you know you can look at that and kind of see how my mind works. You know, that's in my dreams at night. So. Uh, as you walk in, this is a little more of the adult side. The other side is more for kids. I could be walking up and getting ice cream. But uh, I don't know, it's just kind of my uh, Sistine Chapel. If everyone will follow our team, guys, we're going to go out this uh, gate door right here. We're going to go up to the last gate. This is actually our first building that we ever had. We used to do everything out of this building right here. So we had. Joker brand was right here. There was a bunch of uh, racks with the clothes, and there was only one office upstairs, and we all shared one office together. And my little tattoo shop was right where you guys walked in. 
the cool thing about that little entrance right there is that a, a tattoo, 50 Cent, Eminem, uh, Beyonce, the list goes crazy. But uh, that little room has some magic to it, you know? So this, this place means a lot to us, a lot of history here. That's where I actually airbrush all the murals and the cars and stuff like that. And for the last couple of years, I've just been painting my own cars with the murals on them because they take a while. Once in a while, sliding one or two. Right now, I'm building a, a, a van for vans. So vans are going to take it on a warp tour. And so there's a hard line of me being a street artist on when, when do you sell out, when you, how do you stay, you know, authentic, you know. So for me, I'm very, very particular on everything that we, I put my artwork at. I turn down more collaborations than I actually do. And the reason is, is because a lot of people, they have cool ideas, they got the money right, but it's corny. So I got I to refuse it, you know. Unfortunately, the stuff I do believe in, the stuff I do like, keeps us busy. So I'm able to turn down those other ones and keep it more exclusive. As you can see, the, our, this is our, our home, our tattoo shop and everything. We have no sign out front, there's no address listed. We're, we're completely private, you have to be invited to come here. And that's one of the cool things about today is that we're able to invite a lot of people that have never seen the studio before.